Hello friends and welcome back to Rachel's Baking Corner. <laughs> um, today I am going to be making homemade soft pretzel knots with a homemade cheese dipping sauce. I am so excited because A, who doesn't love a good soft pretzel and B, um, who doesn't love being able to make it their own shape and size and dip it into a cheese sauce that they also made from scratch. So <laughs> without further ado, let's get started. We're gonna go over ingredients. We have pretzel ingredients here, we have cheese ingredients here, and we have specialty uh, utensils and tools today, okay? So I am going to be reading off my laptop, don't judge me. We are going to be using three and a quarter to four cups of flour, but we're gonna also talk grams here, 469 to 500 grams. I have in here right at 480 grams because I always kind of just teeter in the middle and if I need to add more flour, I can. I don't intend to use all this flour because I live in a dry climate. It's usually not that necessary for me. Then we have half of a cup of warm water, right around 98 to 100 degrees. We have one tablespoon of butter melted. We have uh, one teaspoon of salt. Seven grams of instant yeast, instant active yeast, and one tablespoon of brown sugar. And then we have half of a cup of baking soda for the boil, okay? If you don't know what I mean by the boil, you'll understand soon. <laughs> the cheese sauce, we are going to do one cup of shredded cheddar cheese, one tablespoon of butter, one tablespoon of flour, and one cup of milk, okay? We're gonna make a roux, we're gonna add the cheese, it's gonna be delicious. Now when it comes to specialty tools, I recommend a kitchen scale. It is not required, but it certainly is helpful, especially because I'd like my knots to be relatively uniform in size. So if I can measure out each ball of dough to make sure they weigh about the same, then I know that my knots will be about the same size. You know? You've got whisk, you've got bench scrapers. This is gonna help me cut my dough. This is gonna help me get it out of the bowl and then my KitchenAid with a dough hook attachment. You don't need the KitchenAid. You can do this with determination and elbow grease. <laughs> I'm just too lazy for that. And then a clean kitchen, clean kitchen cloth to cover your dough to let it rest. So with all of that in mind, let's um, clean everything up here and get started on the dough, okay? Okay. Let's get started on the dough. We are going to take one and a half cups of warm water and pour it straight into the mixer. Then we are going to add our seven grams of instant active yeast and one tablespoon of brown sugar. You could also use white sugar for the record. And we're gonna whisk this together until dissolved. If you are new to dough making, the reason why you wanna mix sugar and the yeast together in the warm water is because the yeast will eat the sugar and it will start to let out the gases that it needs to and activate it essentially. We're gonna let this mixture sit for five minutes so that the yeast can really activate and burp out its gases. Um, so we're gonna leave it alone for five minutes. So I'll see you in a second. I'm gonna cover it up so no fluff gets in there, you know? Okay, so five minutes has elapsed and our yeast has a big, beautiful layer of foam on top, which means that it's alive. So we can proceed. <laughs> what I mean by foam. So it's got a nice layer of milky white foam and bubbles that all formed on its own, it's its own gases. So now we're gonna add our one tablespoon of butter and our one tablespoon of salt, and then three cups of our flour. Just three cups for now, just to kinda see where we're at with the moisture, and then we can add more or what have you going forward. So let's get to it. I'm going to attach my dough hook. Salt. Butter. Oh, it has solidified. Hold please. It's a little cold where I live right now, so. My butter kind of chunked up a bit, that's okay. Okay, we're gonna call that one cup. We're gonna call that two cups. And we're gonna call that three cups because it's definitely compacting as I scoop it. It never hurts to start slow. This is gonna get a little loud, so I'm gonna mix this for about one minute and then I'll scrape down the sides. Uh. 
start slowly so you don't make a mess. <laughs> So I'm going to attempt to scrape down the sides just to make sure all the flour isn't stuck to the walls of the bowl. I say attempt because as you could see, that was, it's a little sticky at the moment. Okay. Let's go ahead and add another scoop. I made a little mess. See. Oh my gosh, come on. All over the place. There we go. That's looking much better. See, now the dough is actually sticking to the dough hook and then coming off the sides of the actual bowl. So that's what we want. My dough is still looking rather sticky, so we're gonna add a little more flour. And we're gonna dance again. Ready for it? It's just making a big mess if I don't do this. Okay. Now we're gonna let this knead for two minutes <laughs> in order to get some gluten fibers forming in there. Gluten molecules, gluten strands. I don't know, but gluten. We wanna get the gluten. Two minutes. <laughs> so, two minutes has passed. Mm hmm. We've got sticky but firm dough. It's definitely holding together. That's what we want. Okay, so our two minutes has passed. I think the dough looks great. So I have my flexible bench scraper. We're just gonna get all of the dough into the, there we go, into the bowl. So now the recipe says to let this rest for 10 to 30 minutes. I don't really know what for other than to let the yeast kind of rise in the dough. So I think what I'm gonna do is just leave it for the full 30 minutes, because again, it's kind of cold where I am right now. And then we will start making some knots. We are back. It has been 25 minutes. My dough has doubled in size, which is what I'm assuming we're looking for. And it did it very easily. We had some nice warm water with that instant yeast. It started letting out its gases and that's exactly what we want to get a light, airy and chewy pretzel. Yeah. So I have a cutting board. You don't need a cutting board. I just don't want to mar up my kitchen island. <laughs> cutting board with flour, some extra flour for sprinkling. I have my metal bench scraper and my rubber sil silicone scraper. <laughs> metal bench scraper, rubber bench scraper. Yeah. Here's a tip if you ever need one. Um, when you're weighing out dough, cover your kitchen scale in plastic wrap top to bottom, cover it so that you don't have to do a whole lot of cleaning up afterwards. You can just peel it off and be done with it. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is actually scrape out my dough onto my floured cutting board with my rubber or silicone bench scraper. Oh, it looks so soft and fluffy. There we go. Beautiful. And with floured hands, I'm going to just kind of release the air out of it. Beautiful. Let's see how much this bad boy weighs. We are working with 834 grams. How much is 834 divided by 14? That would be approximately 59.5714. Okay. So we're gonna do about 60 grams each. So let's just see when we cut a little piece here, how much we get. 46, 63, 60, great. So there's one, just gonna roll it up for now.
Okay, so we're gonna roll these out. And then we're gonna tie a knot. Roll it a little more. Tie it into a knot to the best of our ability. And tuck the ends in. Boom. Pretty simple. And this is not a terribly sticky dough, but if it does get to be a little too sticky, you just put a little flour down. It's really easy. So I'm just making it into a worm. I do need a little flour. Put a little flour on the cutting board here. Don't want too much, because you don't want to dry it out. But we're gonna make a little worm. I'm kind of just pinching and squeezing to make it into a long worm. Twist and tie it into a knot. And then tuck the pieces underneath. Just kind of form it into a ball and you get a little knot. I am not looking for perfection here. I'm looking for soft pretzels. <laughs> so all I'm trying to do is just make it delicious and something that you can pull apart like you would a pretzel because that was my favorite part about pretzels growing up was that you could pull off pieces and oh it's so nostalgic to me you know what i should do is i should get my water boiling we need nine cups of water and a half cup of baking soda we're going to pour into it So just twist, tie into a knot, and tuck the, the pieces to the side. You can also get your oven preheated 400 degrees. I will be using my toaster oven. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Last one. All right. So let's make our cheese sauce. We're gonna start by melting our butter. Got medium high heat, tablespoon of butter. We're gonna add our tablespoon of flour. We're gonna whisk this for one minute just to cook out all that flour flavor. Caramelize it a little bit. Okay, we're gonna slowly pour in the milk, one cup. Wanna get all those clumps cooked down. That's why we're using a whisk. By the way, I should mention this milk is room temperature. Now we're gonna just slowly cook this until it's thick and creamy. Then we'll add our cheese. Okay, now that it's starting to get thick, you can tell it's getting thick because drag marks are starting to show. We're gonna slowly add our cheese, just a little bit at a time. That was about half. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh, 
Okay. Whew. Almost lost my camera and the cheese sauce. That was a close call. We're gonna turn the heat off completely now. This got a little thicker than I wanted it to, so I'm gonna add a little bit of milk. That's better. Oh, that looks so silky and delicious. Okay, let's taste a little bit. It's hot. Mmm. Mmm, yeah, let's add a little salt. Since I have it, we're gonna add a teeny bit more milk. And we're gonna add some dried mustard powder, garlic powder, and onion powder. Just flavor it up a little bit. It instantly smells so good. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Mm. I almost think it could use a little paprika. I'm probably getting carried away here, but it needs a little smoky taste to it. And I think it'll enrich the color too. And a little bit more salt. <laughs> Final taste. Hopefully. Mmm. Ooh, yes, that crushed it. Yes. That's gonna be so good. Okay. Okay, so I have decided last minute that I'm gonna do a cinnamon sugar pretzel on some of these. So I've decided to make a quick little frosting. Literally just gonna eyeball this. I'm just gonna get some powdered sugar. Usually you would use a little bit of milk, but I only have half and half at the moment. So we're just gonna use a little bit of that and whisk it together to make a little frosting. There we go. Ooh, taste it. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. So my first batch just came out. Now we're gonna just wait for the second batch and then it will be time to taste. These you wanna serve warm because they're pretzels. <laughs> um, also, because I used my toaster oven at 400 degrees, these actually baked in 15 minutes versus 25 minutes. So it all depends on your oven. Just keep an eye on them. You want them to be golden brown and beautiful when they come out of the oven, okay? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so here we are, just about half an hour later. It took me about two batches since I used my toaster oven. And we have some beautiful, cute little pretzel balls. They're like little buns. They just bounce right back up. They're so cute. Let me get close and we'll take a, a, take a little nibbling of one. And then I'm waiting on my cinnamon sugar ones to cool because they just literally came out of the oven and I'm that impatient. I need to try this right now. So let me, let me come around. Look at this beautiful thing. It came out so perfect, so cute, and I'm so excited to try it. So I'm gonna just tear it. Ooh, yes, it's exactly what I want. It has a nice good bake, good crumb, just dip. Mmm. So soft and delicate. I'm getting salt all over my floor. Let's try it by itself. Mm -hmm. Perfect texture. Salty, chewy, bready. That 
almost me metallic-y taste of baking soda. <laughs> Cinnamon sugar. Ooh. Oh, it's still steaming. What? Good, let's try it. Dipped in the frosting. You could drizzle, but I'm gonna dip because you dip pretzels. Mmm. This face looks mad because it's mad. I've never done that before. That is so good. Holy smokes. It's just steaming. Make these. These are so, so good. They're warm, they're chewy, they're bready, they're comforting, they're salty, they're sweet, <laughs> even though they look a little burnt. They are so worth the time. They're worth the effort. Mm. I highly recommend you make this. This is a great introduction to yeast making, whether it be bread dough, pretzel dough, you name it. It is so easy, it's so good, and it, it's, it's so fun, I love it. I think it's fun, I think it's therapeutic, and I think it's exciting knowing that I made these. I made these, me. <laughs> so, um, if any of my coworkers watch my videos, just know you're getting these at work tomorrow. <laughs> Um, some of them, maybe not all of them. <laughs> okay, I gotta go now. I have some pretzels to eat and I will see y'all next time. Thank you for watching. Please like this video if you liked it. Subscribe and I will see you very soon. I love you. Mwah. Bye.